Hey, what's up everybody? In this lesson, we're gonna learn the very basics of Adobe Illustrator. If you're brand new to Illustrator, welcome. This is going to be the down and dirty basics of how to get started using the basic functions of Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna get started by opening our file and I'm gonna to navigate to this Illustrator exercise file. Our goal today is to look at all of these different elements and see how we can recreate them using vector assets. The first thing I'm going to do before we even get started is I'm going to reset my workspace. I'm gonna reset my essential workspace by going to window and at the very, 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 very top, we can go to workspace and hit reset essentials. The other thing I like to do is do a few little settings. I like to go to my edit preferences and general, and I like to make sure that scale stroke and effects is turned on. That really helps. You can also turn on scale corners if you wish. I'm gonna hit okay on that. We have a couple of elements here on the screen. We have our artboard, which is our main element. If you hold your space bar, you can kind of move that canvas and artboard around. We have an artboard tool by hitting edit artboards in which we can draw more artboards onto the stage. Now, that is a great way if you're trying to do a multi-layout design or whatnot that you can grab. By default, your properties panel will show some really fun stuff. But another window I like to turn on is I like to go to my window and I like to turn on my control bar. That's going to open this up a little bit. I also go to window toolbars and turn on advanced. That's gonna give me a lot more tools to play with within this view. Those tools and those settings are the settings I'm gonna use. I suggest if you're new to Illustrator and you're following along that you're gonna do the same exact thing. All of these will give you kind of the head start on creating. Our goal today is to create each of these different elements and in doing so, learn some of the basic techniques to create vector graphics in Illustrator. I will preface this by saying that even though I'm doing these a particular way, there are a thousand ways to recreate something typically in vector. These are just the ways to get you started using some of the tools. I'm not necessarily going for exact copies of these icons. I'm using them as kind of guides to get me basic shapes. I have my reference layer here all ready to go. That is locked. I can go ahead and not select these by accident. I have all of the different empty layers for your shapes. Now layers work a little different if you're familiar to Photoshop. Layers in Illustrator have layers and then sub layers. You wanna think of your layers more as folders or groups rather than individual flattened layers. You can see a lot of these groups have different objects within the scene. Now we're gonna go ahead and click and lock all of our layers. Now that's a really fancy way I just did that. I just left clicked and dragged down. I'm gonna unlock my moon layer. I'm gonna also hide all those layers visibilities by doing the same thing and turning the eyeball on and off. I'm gonna then select my layer and make sure this little radial button or target is clicked. And we're gonna start with our very first shape, which is this moon shape. Now that we have this moon shape, we're gonna go ahead and deconstruct it. So I'm gonna hit Control Y, and that's gonna give me an outline view of what I'm looking at. So you can kind of see the different shape, Control or Command Y again to get back to shaded view. I can see that this is made up of circles. I'm gonna go ahead and drag a ellipse tool by going to my rectangle, holding my left mouse button and going to ellipse. I'm gonna then navigate to what I feel is the center point here. You can be a little off on this, that's okay, but this looks to be kind of the center. I'm going to left click and drag a circle out. Well, you can see right away that when I drag that circle out, it gave me a nice circle, but when I try to move it, well, I draw another circle. That's when our selection tools come into play. We have two very important tools. We have the selection tool, which is V as in Victor on your keyboard, and you have the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool or the white arrow will allow you to pull different individual points in any given element. Let me hit Control Z to go back. While the direct selection tool will allow you to move an element and kind of arrange it into the scene. For demo's sake, let's not make this black. Let's go ahead and navigate down on our toolbar to the fill and the stroke. Right now we have no stroke, which we could activate the stroke or the outline of the image if we wish, but we're gonna double click on the fill 
and just change this to kind of a bluish color. We can swap those colors to kind of see through them. But in our case, we want to kind of just line this up just to give us a visual guide. When you're expanding something, you can also hold shift and that will keep it pretty uniform. We'll just kind of expand this out. That's perfect. It doesn't have to be amazingly accurate to that shape. The next step is we want to create another circle in the middle. So for this, I'm going to click away. I'm going to change my palette to white. You may not want white. Let's pick like a yellow or something. We're going to drag and drop another circle. Now that circle is going to represent kind of the chunk that's taken out of this moon. And so we're going to go ahead and again, align our shapes here. You'll notice that the yellow circle is in front. If yours is not, open up your layers and click and drag your layers. That will change the arrangement of your specific layers in the scene. Now that we have these shapes, what we want to do is use this as like a cookie cutter. So using the yellow cookie cutter out the blue. I'm going to click on the yellow with my direct selection tool selected. Shift click the blue. I'm going to open up a tool called the Pathfinder. Under Window, we're going to go down to Pathfinder. What this will do is allow us to different take different shapes and cook almond. What this will allow us to do is subtract, add, and divide different shapes with one another. Here you can see if I hit Unite, that's going to create one shape. If I hit minus front, it's going to delete that shape, which is really what we want. If we hit intersect, it's going to show us the overlap of that shape. If we hit exclude, it's going to do the opposite of intersect. Pathfinder down at the bottom can also divide where it keeps and retains the shapes. It can do things like trim or merge. What's happening is it's creating groups in the background for me. For our sake, we're going to use minus front. Once we have minus front, we have a pretty solid shape. The next thing I want to do is just smooth it a bit. I'm going to go ahead and select my moon shape and go to object. And we're going to take that path and we're going to use the smooth function. So object path smooth. I'm going to just pull that in just ever so slightly. That looks good. It's about 35% and voila, we have a pretty close shape to that initial moon. All right, now go ahead and give it a try on your end and see what you come up with. Moving on to our next shape, we're going to recreate this heart. So I'm going to go ahead and eyeball on the heart layer and unlock it and make sure that layer is selected. And let's dissect this heart. That kind of sounds gross, but let's go with it. And for this, I'm going to use my ellipse tool. I know the heart has some circles in it. I'm going to draw out just like I did in the moon shape. I'm going to get these as big as I possibly can. Maybe just a little bigger there. That looks good. I'm going to now want to draw a second circle. But rather than just redraw it, I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key. Now when I tap that, you're going to notice that I get these two little cursors. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag it over and I'm going to hold shift as well. And that's going to create the top of the heart shape. Then let's inspect this bottom kind of shape in the, in the bottom of the heart. For that, let's go ahead and hold our left mouse button down and create a rectangle. I'm going to create my rectangle here and I'm going to move this into place. I'm going to hover outside with my direct selection tool. If I just hover, I'll eventually get this rotation. And we're going to get a nice rotation. Now, the next step is I need to kind of pull this in so it fits within the specific heart. I'm going to let my smart guides do this. So you see where it says intersect there, right there when it says intersect and it says anchor. That means it's on the actual guide. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit as well. That looks pretty good. If you don't have these little purple guides, I want you to go to view. I want you to turn on smart guides. They're extraordinarily helpful. I can hit my A key and highlight specific points and then snap those points as well. So you can see if I tap that point there and pull down, I can do that. Now we have our heart. We could do the same method as the moon. We could grab them all. In this case, we could hit that good old unite key 
and that will give us a united heart. Another fun way to do this is navigate to your shape builder tool, which is shift M and click on that. And then with everything highlighted, just drag a cursor around it and it's gonna pull it together. Pretty nice. Now in our case, you saw we had some leftover points at the top. This is why I always like to use things like shape modes. But overall, the big trick here is these will not work if you don't have anything selected. So always make sure to select things. That's a big beginner mistake if you're using Adobe Illustrator. Now we have our blue heart. Now go ahead and see what you can create using those three shapes. Next, we have our single water droplet. So for our single water droplet, we're going to do a very similar step. We're gonna get our ellipse tool. We're gonna to unlock our water droplet layer and make sure we're highlighting it. We're gonna go ahead and draw out our circle at least until we reach pseudo those pseudo edges and peaks. Very cool. In this case, we're gonna hit A. I'm gonna grab more than one point because I want to show you kind of a cool scaling technique. If I highlight what I'm doing is grabbing these two little edges, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and that will pull them out uniformly. So that's going to give us that kind of nice round shape. That looks great. Any of these handles that you want to kind of pull, you can kind of pull them down into place. How do we now get this peak? Okay, for this peak, I'm going to select just this and I'm going to pull it to the very top. I've made an egg. Awesome, but I need a teardrop. Now I could select these little edges and pull them down and look at that. If I highlight the edge, pull it down. That one's snapping back on me. It doesn't like me today, but I can go ahead and do that. And there we go. The problem is if we look at our tool, we have, and we must have drawn a second one there, but if we look at our tool here or our shape here, we have a uh, pretty decent shape, but we don't have this stroke. To get this stroke, what I'm gonna do is flip my colors. So when I flip my colors, I now have the stroke. When I go to my selection tool and I select this at the top, I can up the value of the stroke to create the stroke that I wish. So we're gonna use about five or six here. I'm gonna then double click let's go ahead and fill this with like a lighter blue just so you can see. Now I have a fill and a stroke in which I can utilize. If I want to turn one of those off, I would use the little none key and turn that off. I'm going to hit control Z though because I kind of like what we have. Let's hit A on our keyboard and it looks like that top part is just ever so smooth. These little circles are really, really helpful to create smooth shapes. And voila, you've just made your first water droplet. The next setup we have is our eye shape. We could do this in a slew of ways, but let's go ahead and break out the dreaded pen tool. So the pen tool is actually one of your most powerful tools here in Illustrator. Right now we have that old blue and light blue set. Let's turn off our, our fill and let's just focus on our stroke. What we're gonna do is most people would approach the pen tool like this. You know, that could work, but I'm gonna show you the cleaner way to do it. What we're gonna do is we're going to just draw a couple of lines. Check how easy this is. We're gonna go to the peak, the valley. I'm gonna make sure they intersect, that I get a little circle, and I hit okay. Now, let's go ahead and draw this out. So we're gonna align these, and I know you're thinking this is crazy, but now that we have those, then I go back to my pen tool and I'm going to hold my alt or option key to get this little carrot. Now this carrot, if I let go of it, you're going to see something like this. But if I hold the alt key again and I hold my left mouse button, I can drag Bezier handles. So again, carrot, drag Bezier handles. And y'all, we just made our eyeball. The inside is going to be pretty easy. So we'll start with the inside by just kind of pulling out another circle. We made a bunch of circles already. Pull that into the middle. I can then go, one of my favorite things to do is copy and paste. Control C will copy. That's also the same as going to edit copy. Control P would paste, but I wanna actually hit on this one, Control F, because I'm gonna paste another shape in front. And that shape, now, I can pull up, and oh, big stroke, right? 
Let's lower that stroke setting. We've just created our very own eyeball. Let's compare it to the original in a matter of seconds. Check that out. Not too bad. This stroke probably could be a hair smaller and maybe just a little bit higher just so we get a little bit of that under eye going. But there you are. You've just learned to use the pen tool in a really linear or sharp way. It avoids you having to worry about things like messed up anchor points or Bezier curves. And especially if you're new, it's going to be the easier way to do it. So go ahead and give the eye a try. All right, everybody. Next, we have a double water spot. I've gone ahead and unlocked that single water drop layer. I've unlocked my double empty water drop layer. Let's go ahead and borrow one of our elements from the top water drop. So to do that, I'm going to hit Control C to copy. I'm going to then lock that layer and go to the double water layer and hit Control V. Once I have my water drop in place, I can hide the layer that I was working on and hold Alt and make sure I drag a copy on top. Now in this case, they're switched. So I'm going to open up my layers and just hold my left mouse button and switch their layer order because I want this one in the front to appear in the front. Now that I have this, I'm missing one element. I can make this element a couple different ways. I could get my pen tool and kind of eyeball this pen stroke, you know, use that old control key, move it into place, great. I could do it that way. In our case, we wanna learn kind of some fun advanced techniques. I wanna show you one of my favorite tools. I'm gonna to hit control Y so we can kind of see what's happening behind the scenes. And I'm gonna use my scissor tool. Your scissor tool is C on your keyboard. It's under the eraser tool panel. I'm gonna go in my scissor tool and I'm gonna just cut this path. I'm gonna kind of align it to where I think right there and roughly there. I'm gonna just put a little anchor point here. Now, what did that do? Control Y again. What that actually did, and if I move this out of the way, is it cut this little area out for me. Let me undo that. Why is that important? Well, it gave me a little path that if I drag on top, I now have that specific shape. So here, I'm gonna actually turn off the fill on this one. I don't have the rounded corner on this stroke. That's pretty easy to fix. I can go to my properties, and you'll notice I have, when I have it selected, a stroke panel. I'm going to click on the word stroke. One of my first options is cap. Now, in a matter of minutes, I have a very similar object to this. Now, another thing you may want to do at this point is something called expand appearance. By going to object expand, this is going to take any stroke and create essentially a shape with it. So that's going to kind of build that shape. Uh, at this stage, I could go through and use some of my unite features or my divide features. I could you know, kind of pull these all together. But for the most part, we now have a great icon in which we can kind of utilize work we did before as we see fit. Go ahead and give that a shot. All right, next we're going to create this flower. And this flower is actually pretty easy to do. We can probably guess this center circle. So I'm going to draw a kind of a center circle with just a stroke. If you ever double click by accident, you're just in isolation mode. You can always hit these little arrows at the top to get yourself out of there. That looks pretty good. So I will fill that with a lighter blue for demo's sake so we can see. Great. Now, how do we get these shapes? Well, just like our other lesson, we're going to very quickly kind of create the peak of the path. We'll drag this up. Great. I don't like that little stroke on it, so I'll highlight my stroke and hit the little X button. And then using the pen tool, once again, hold my Alt key and just kind of drag this up till I see fit. And I actually like this better than the original, so I'm going to keep this. And we're going to drag this on top of our flower petal. Okay. Now that we have this, I may highlight them both and go to the top and hit align. That's just going to align the center. So you can kind of see how that's kind of working there. I'm going to open my layer and move that petal underneath the path. Now with all of these, I could type, you know, 
pedal, right? I could go ahead and type that or center. And all I'm doing is clicking in there and just naming my layers. But how do we get this to work around the edge? I could use my alt technique and kind of rotate these into place, which is fine. That's a good method. But I want to show you another tool in your toolbox. This tool, and let's move these because we're going to need a little bit of space, is called your rotate tool. You're going to select the thing you want to rotate and hit R on your keyboard. And that will give you a little anchor point in the middle. If you hold on that anchor point and left click, you can drag that anchor point to anywhere you wish. Now, if you just left click outside of this, you'll be able to adjust that specific rotational value. Now, using the techniques we learned on other shapes, as you start dragging, if you hold the Alt key, you will create, you guessed it, a duplication. Now, once you do that, this is a secret Illustrator trick. Hit Command or Control D, and it will repeat that setup for you. And y'all, you got yourself a nice flower. That also works on things like if you just create a circle, for instance, or any shape, really, and you hold that Alt key, right? And you get that Alt key held down and you move it to the side and you move it to the side, right? If you hit Control D, it will continue to move that for you in that incremental space. That is a really quick way in our case to rotate and create copies of something rather quickly. So go ahead and take a pause in the video and give that a shot. All right, and in this one, we're going to do a more complex shape. Rather than worry about, again, all of these wild tools and, and fancy ways to do stuff, we're gonna keep this rather simple. I see some rectangles. The very first thing I'm gonna do is kind of draw a rectangle, hit V on my keyboard, and just align this as close as possible go and stretch this. Now, if you can't see this, hit control Y and you'll go to that kind of template preview mode. Great. I'm not going to even smooth this out yet. I'm going to hold my alt key on this. We're going to click and drag that up here and just snap it into place. Go ahead and use your guides when you can. Pull that down. When you get there, you hold shift I'm still on that direct selection tool, or pardon me, the selection tool, the black arrow, and I'm gonna pull that down. Great, do the same here. Hold shift. Pull that down. Then if we hit control Y again, which, oh, I missed one of the corners there, didn't I? Let me undo that. Shift, gotta hold shift down. Undo is just command Z again. No harm, no foul. And that is perfect. So we've done that first shape. Great. These are out of the way. Next, we're going to do our good old pen tool. And we're not going to worry about all these fancy kind of curves and whatnot. We're going to just kind of keep it very basic. Just kind of finding the peaks of the curves. We'll close that up. And there you go. That one's done. We'll move that out of the way for the time being. Once again, we can adjust this with the A tool if you really want to grab individual anchor points and align them. We could do that, but this is looking pretty good. Now, what is this negative space? Well, we know it's a circle, and we could probably see that that's a rectangle. So let's go ahead and make those two shapes. So we're going to start with our circle. Great. And then we're going to left click and go to our rectangle tool and open that up. Now, if you know, this is a pretty easy shape to draw with your pen tool, you may just want to kind of quickly draw that out. You can do that as well. Now that I have these two tools, I can use that shape builder tool. Always make sure you're highlighting what you want to merge together. We can click and drag and we've just created that inner shape. Now, why is this important? Let's change the color so we can see we're going to subtract that shape from this shape. When I put this on top of this, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of nudge this back into place. I have a few little paths adjustments just to make sure it's kind of in the center. Now you're gonna use that Pathfinder tool to grab both, and we're going to go ahead and hit minus front like we did before, and now we have a nice minus front. We can do a little adjusting while we have our template. We may want to snap that curve there. 
But overall, y'all, this is looking really good. Let's add that circle in the middle here. Perfect. All right. That's looking really great. Let's grab everything and move it out of the way. Let's kind of look. We do have a little bit of areas that I, I kind of missed at the top. So if you ever have an area like this, you know, you can even get your pen tool. We could kind of grab that and grab that and kind of do a minus front just to clean it up. If you have little erroneous paths, you can hit delete on them if you want, or you can kind of go in. My favorite way is just to kind of grab the whole thing and go to object path. You can use simplify and you can kind of play with that setting. You can also use object path smooth. We've done that a bit and that will kind of smooth them out. That actually worked out really well. And check that out, y'all. You have your very own pen tool icon in a matter of minutes. Go ahead and give that one your best shot. All right, for the final challenge, we're going to do Batman. This is gonna be a test of what you learned. You could really overcomplicate this by making tons of shapes and tools. We're gonna to keep it really simple, so bear with me right here. I'm gonna grab Batman and I'm going to just start to draw very linear shapes. I want to make sure I'm going to hit escape there. I want to make sure that I'm using the stroke tool so you can see that. And we're going to just find kind of the peaks of our anchors anywhere you think there's a big bend. Go to the peak of this tool here. A lot of people will look at you because, you know, they're using the pen tool and they'll think, oh, wow, you're, you know, you're, this doesn't look anything like what you want. But remember, this is a really easy way if you're a beginner to kind of stay in a safe zone. Once you have this set up, you know the basic shape is there, that's when you hold down your Alt key and click and drag. And it's a little more forgiving because you're really only focusing on handles like what you see here. I'm gonna go through just the peaks of all the curves and see what happens when I click and left mouse click drag those out. I'm not dealing with the sharp parts, I wanna keep those sharp. This part, that looks good, but this doesn't. So I'm gonna hold Alt just on that handle and pull it out. For my beginners out there, guess what? You're illustrating, you're doing some cool stuff. Grab this centerpiece. If they ever get a little wonky, grab the handle, nudge it up. Pull that handle out a little bit, great. Now, if we need to connect one that we forgot, not a big deal. Pen tool is actually pretty forgiving in the end. And then the final one we want to do is this one. We just want that to be a little high up there. There we are. Okay, shift it to blue. Check it out, you have your own bat symbol. Once again, we can go in and hit shape and we can hit smooth if we're afraid that, you know, we need it just to be a little a smoother on our line work, even if we do a couple percentages there. I'm going to go ahead here and do object expand just to kind of create that. You have half of the bat symbol. Now we can reflect this. We can reflect this in a couple different ways. You can hit the O key for the reflection tool and we can double click on that and we could say vertical and we could do copy and move that over. There you go. So we have the reflection there as well. That's one way. At this stage, you can grab everything and you can kind of unite it and you'll have kind of your floating bat symbol and ready to go. Alternatively, you can just kind of snap them together to the best of your ability and open up that layer and you can highlight them both and just group them. By grouping them, they're still separate, but you can now have access to kind of both points. Overall, in the net, in the last couple minutes, we've created some of the basic shapes to get you started thinking about vector recreation. Doing these exercises will really help hone your skills for the more advanced art making that you're gonna do later in the semester. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see what you create.